Hey YouTube, what's up? Welcome back to another video in the series where I try to start my own tech company and share the lessons that I'm learning along the way. For context, I'm building a productivity application that helps users keep better track of their time, but there's also a bit of a gamification element to it as well. So as these users compete against each other, I thought it would be really cool if there was a leaderboard that showed how much focus time a user has per day or their rank or their level, something like that. So that's what I built. You can see it here on my screen is the leaderboard that I've built. Now the UI is nothing to write home about. I am going to do a second pass of the application where I go in and update all of the UI and I'll work with the designer to make it really pretty. But first I wanted to focus purely on functionality. So I've built this using Supabase and this is live on my website right now. And in order to make this work, I wanted it to be opt in. So I added a category to my users table on my database that allowed a user to opt in to the leaderboard. So a leaderboard as a concept isn't a particularly difficult thing to code. It's really just sort of a database of entries and then you organize them based off of however you want to rank your leaderboard. Maybe that could be level as I'm doing, it could be experience or like points earned in whatever game you're creating, something like that. The complication for me came here. Once I created this opt-in to leaderboard Boolean, you would think, okay, well we just return the user information for people who have opted in to that leaderboard. But here's where it gets a little tricky. <laughs> Hold up. Uh, the privacy element of it there. So if a client sends a request to the users table and the users table can send back information for all of the users who have opted into the leaderboard, the client is probably gonna be able to access information that they shouldn't be able to see from that users table, like email addresses, or um, I think IDs aren't particularly sensitive, but other information associated with that user, like their payment plan type, whatever's in the users data table, we don't necessarily want to disclose to everybody else. We want their data to be secure. So that would be not cool if we're showing data that other users aren't supposed to see. So we know that this isn't a good request to send because permissions don't allow for it. So what should we do? Well, after thinking about it for a while, the solution that I came to was to create a second users table or really like a subsection of the users table that only had the information that I was okay with users sharing with each other. So instead of the client sending a request to the users table, the client will send that request to a leaderboard table. And again, that leaderboard has a subsection of data that is present on the users table. And that will be cool for the client to see uh, in terms of privacy and permissions. So here is the code that I'm using to submit data to the leaderboard. You can see this is a function that takes in a user object, which we'll need to authenticate the request. The user info on 395 is gonna equal to a call from the Supabase object. And from the users, we're gonna select uh, the users table, let's sort of select all, where we're equal, the ID is gonna equal the user ID. So if there is data on that user info, we're going to then insert on the leaderboard table. And we're going to take a subsection, sub excuse me, of data returned from that user info and populate the leaderboard with it. And that will be the user ID, their full name, their level, the avatar URL, which in the future will be a URL to a CDN that houses the avatar images. And that allows us to showcase a user's avatar on our leaderboard, but I'm not utilizing it at the moment. And our experience. If there's an error returned from that call, we will log it. And if there is data returned from that call, we will also log that data. So using the leaderboard, we will have the correct permissions. And again, it's pretty straightforward um, how to build a leaderboard. You just It's really just a database. But this is how we're going to fetch the information from that leaderboard and map over it on our front end. So pretty straightforward call. Again, we're gonna take in the user object, which we're using for authentication as an argument for this fetch leaderboard function. This will return a promise that resolves to be an array of leaderboard entries, which I've typed that up uh, outside of this file in my types file. 
So on line 419, we're gonna destructure data and error from the return of this super base function call. We're gonna query the leaderboard, select everything, and we're gonna order it by the level and ascending is gonna to equal to true. So this will give uh, the users with the highest levels first, and then we're gonna limit that to 10. If there's an error, we're gonna log that error. If there is data, we're going to first log that data. I'm very log happy in my application, especially when I'm in the proof of concept mode as I currently am, and then we're gonna return that data. And then we'll be good. This video has been a bit of a high level overview of how I accomplish this, but if you're using Superbase to build a leaderboard, hopefully some of the code that I've shared on screen in this video is helpful to you as well. If it is, please drop a like down below, and if you enjoy this type of content, please consider subscribing. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.